Hi again, everyone, and welcome to Badger Breakdown, brought to you by U.S. Cellular. I'm Mike Lucas from UWBadgers.com. I'm joined by the voice of the Badgers, Matt LePay. There are a lot of different reasons, factors, why Wisconsin's playing against Ohio State in a Big Ten championship game. What are some of the top ones as far as you're concerned? Going back to Northwestern, how this team has kind of transformed itself into a title contender. Yeah, yeah, beyond the obvious of Melvin Gordon. I think they've done a great job of making this two quarterback system work. Joel Stavi, we've talked about, one of the terrific comeback stories within the same season that maybe most of us have ever seen out of a Badger, or maybe a lot of people have seen from any program. Tanner has uh, adapted well to his role as well. He's become a very dangerous runner. The defense, Mike, I think has been I don't know if they would admit it behind us, but it's been better than most expected. It's been better than, than I expected, whatever that means, probably not much. But when you're replacing every starter in your front seven and to be able to be top five material in so many categories and to do it without getting a lot of turnovers, I mean, they're, they're doing a lot of things right on the defensive side of the ball. But I go back to that offense. They've done a great job for the coordinator down, Andy Ludwig on down, of making it work what they have. And, uh, the, you know, Melvin obviously makes it all extra special, but Stavi and McAvoy have done a terrific job. And I believe we both had the same question on defense coming into the season with the huge graduation losses in the front seven. How would this group of players fill those voids? How long would it take to really assimilate and feel comfortable with the 3-4 scheme and we're, we're seeing that they've really caught on quickly. Yeah, it seems to be the case, absolutely. And I think when you, when you talk to some of them, they've simplified some things they as have. this season has gone along as well. And as a result, I think the players have been able to play faster. Gary Anderson has talked about they've been able to coach faster. What he means by that is adjusting on the fly, either halftime adjustments or, or during the course of the game itself. The coaches have been able to make adjustments. The players understand where they're coming from. There is some continuity, and there hadn't been that there for a couple of years, some continuity in the coaching staff uh, uh, you know, all around, with the exception of the running backs coach. But on the defensive side, they're all back, and I think that has uh, played a big part in this defense being as good as it is. It's kind of a shame in some respects that Derek Landish is the only member of that linebacking court to be named first team all Big Ten because they've all contributed in one way or fashion. Yeah, it kind of goes back to the Gary Anderson calling it the no-name defense. I mean, Mark Marcus Trotter's had a terrific year, jo uh, you know, Schobert, uh, Vince Beagle, they've all had games where they've made a lot of plays. Now we've had you know some games here of late where we've seen double-digit tackles, but there was a long stretch where uh, the leading tackler, when you look at the defensive stats, is somebody with eight. I mean, you know, if it's uh, Michael Caputo or whoever it might be, they've done, it has been truly a team defense. They've all done a job filling their roles, and it's resulted in some pretty special things up to this point of the season. And I think considering the gauntlet that this team has run at the end of the season with Nebraska and with Iowa and, and with Minnesota, I think it's fair to ask how much do some of these players have left to go up against another physical team in Ohio State. And probably is fair to ask that of Ohio State True. coming off its arch rival game, as it always does at the end of the season. They're going to be using a new quarterback, as we all know, or quarterbacks, plural, we'll find out together. Yeah, to me, that's an interesting point on both sides. What do both teams have left in the emotional tank, physically, mentally, the whole deal? But. I think, uh, to your point, though, maybe more so with Wisconsin when you you, know, you play the Nebraska game, but you have the, the border rivals, Iowa and Minnesota, back-to-back, -back, extremely physical games in both cases. Now you're asking them to get up again because now you got a Big Ten trophy at stake. That'll go a long way in helping these guys bounce back, but I think both teams will be tested in that regard. <laughs> Obviously, Melvin Gordon has been spectacular. But it would be nice to be able to go into this game knowing how many snaps they could get out of Corey Clement to compliment Gordon. Yeah, it was, it was awfully helpful what he was able to give him against Minnesota, to say the least. Corey's first carry was for the 28-yard touchdown. Almost broke a long touchdown run in the fourth quarter, but set up Melvin for a score. Yeah, he seems to be pretty confident that he's ready to give them more if needed. Uh, you, know, you worry about it. It's a storyline worth watching. but. Man, when he came in, you go back to that Rutgers game. That was, you know, the very, very good game for Corey Clement, and he's been, you know, a little dinged up the last couple of weeks. But when he came in there last week in the second half against uh, against Minnesota, it made a big difference, and hopefully, he can give him even more on Saturday. We've all been so very proud of what J.J. Watt has accomplished, not only here but at the NFL level. Ohio State has its own version of J.J. Watt. Yeah, you'll probably see the comparisons. The television has done it already this season with Joey Boza and the numbers he's putting up, very J.J. Watt-like. Boza leads the Big Ten in sacks, tackles for loss. 
He is, if I called him a disruptor, that's that's an understatement. Also, Michael Bennett, one of their defensive tackles, somebody who jumps out, I think, at the Wisconsin coaches as they study the Buckeyes on defense. Other players do as well. But Bosa's statistics are, as you mentioned, what like. Uh, unfortunately, this time it's Ohio State who's being helped. Badgers made a statement by overcoming the loss at Northwestern, getting to this title game. But I don't sense that's enough for any of these players or coaches. No, no. They're, when, you're, when you're hungry and you get a little taste, you want a little bit more. And I, I think, too, you know, there are some younger players on this team who only have a limited history against Ohio State. There's been an ebb and flow to this series in the last, you know, probably 30 years or so. But right now, Ohio State is on a pretty good run against Wisconsin. The very notable exception was 2010, the, the Gil Reith opening kick and all of that at Camp Randall Stadium. But very close games. Ohio State has made maybe one or two more plays. So if ever there's a time to get one of those to turn your way, it's the perfect venue to do it. And there's another trophy waiting if they can get that done. Badgers seem pretty comfortable in this venue too, or at least they have been. <laughs> been pretty good, been pretty good to them so far and has not been good, at least in the first trip that Ohio State took. Maybe it won't be real good again. For Matt LePay, I'm Mike Lucas. Thanks for watching Badger Breakdown brought to you by U.S. Cellular.